Hello, welcome to Arvinson Academy. We are discussing limits and derivatives. This is a lecture number 7 and I hope you have already watched part 1 to part 6 before watching this part 7. In this lecture, we are going to discuss some problems uh, uh, from the exercise 13.2 uh, which is left out in the previous lecture. So, let us start from the problems uh, which we want to discuss today. From question number 10, because the exercise is, I am writing here, the exercise is 13.2 and this is problem number 10. So, problem number 10 is there and this can be given that find the derivative of cos x from first principle. Let y is equal to fx and fx is defined here as cos x. So, we can take it as y is equal to fx and fx is defined as cos x. So, fx plus delta x is cos x plus delta x, isn't it? Now, uh, by definition, by definition, we know that what is that? That dy by dx is equal to limit delta x tends to 0 fx plus delta x minus fx whole divided by delta x. So, we can uh, proceed like this and uh, what will happen then this employee dy by dx is equal to limit delta x tends to 0 fx plus delta x is nothing else but cos x plus delta x minus cos x whole divided by delta x and that can be written as limit delta x tends to 0 cos c minus cos d that is 2 sin c plus minus 2 sin c plus d by 2 x plus delta x plus x by 2 into sin c minus d by 2 x plus delta x minus x by 2 and whole divided by delta x this is what they so we can use it further that uh, dy by dx is equal to limit delta x tends to 0 and minus 2 sin x plus x is 2x by 2 is x x plus delta x by 2 isn't it x plus delta x by 2 plus into sin this is sin x and x cancels out so this will be remain delta x by 2 whole divided by delta x if you divide by 2 and multiply by 2 it will be like this and sin x by x limit x tends to 0 is 1. So, what we left here uh, that is uh, limit delta x tends to 0 minus sin x plus delta x by 2 into 1 and that will be nothing else but minus sin x. So, what I have used here the formula that I have used this theta tends to 0 sin theta by theta is 1. So, this is the formula which I have used here in this one that this will be like uh, this will come right now. Okay. So, that will come here and uh, using this we will have so, derivative of cos x is minus sin x. Therefore, uh, derivative of dy dx of cos x is what? Minus sin x because y is nothing else. It is dy by dx and y was nothing else but cos x. So, that will be the answer of this question. Now, uh, looking for the next question that is question number 10 here and uh, this will come here like uh, question number 11 and onward. So, that will be like uh, question number 11 and find the derivative of the following function. Find the derivative of the following function. Derivative of the following function. Of the following function. Right. So, these are two questions that we have to deal with. The first question is sin x into cos x, sin x into cos x. We can uh, do it by multiplying 2 and divide 2 and that will be in, done in sin 2x. But here the purpose is giving this question 
is to know that you are aware of product rule or not. So these are two functions you can take out any one of first and derivative of another plus second one into derivative of first one like that isn't it. So you will write here sin x derivative of cos x is minus sin x and cos x derivative of sin x is cos x. So cos x into cos x is cos square x right and sin x into sin x is sin square x. So cos square x minus sin square x and you know this is the formula of cos 2x that will be answered. I hope you got it. Okay. Now the next question is second part of this question 11 is what? Second part of the question is sec x derivative of sec x. So d by dx of sec x is everybody knows this is sec x tan x nothing else. So that can be discussed and that will be answered. There is no problem. Right. Now some questions are there still. So question number third and the question number third is here uh, third part is d question is given 5 sec x plus 4 cos x 5 sec x plus 4 cos x sec x plus 4 cos x now d by dx of 5 sec x plus 4 cos x now that will be d by dx of 5 sec x plus d by dx of 4 cos x so that will be uh, 5 d by dx of sec x plus 4 into d by dx of cos x you know derivative of sec x is sec x tan x and derivative of cos x is minus sin x so that will be answered in this question right now so we can do this now fourth question fourth part of the question in fact that is I am going to take on that uh, cosec x. So d by dx of cosec x derivative of cosec x you know is minus cosec x cot x minus cosec x cot x. So this is just a formula or you can do it by uh, taking quotient rule and convert cosec x as 1 by sin x. But there is no limit. Fifth question d by dx of uh, question is given d by dx of 3 cortex plus 5 cos x 3 cortex plus 5 cos x this can be written as uh, d by dx of 3 cortex and d by dx of 5 cos x you know constant will be taken out and derivative of cortex is minus cos square x so that is minus cos square x and derivative of cos x is minus cos x cortex so we can write answer like this or you can take cosec x as common. So if I take minus cosec x as common then this will be 3 cosec x plus 5 cot x and that will be answered. So that is part 5. Now part 6 is there and part 6 is given d by dx of 5 sin x minus 6 cos x. 6 cos x plus 7 5 sin x 6 cos x plus 7 so this can be written as 5 times of derivative of sin x minus 6 times of derivative of cos x because constant can be taken outside and d by dx of 7 this is independent constant so derivative will be 0 derivative of sin x is cos x and derivative of cos x is minus sin x so it will be plus x sin x and this will be 0 so that will be the answer. Now question number 7 and 7th question is d by dx of 2 tan x 2 tan x minus 7 sec x sec x. So what will happen 2 d by dx of 2 tan x minus 7 d by dx of sec x so what will happen derivative of tan x is sec square x you know that 
sec square x and derivative of sec x is sec x tan x. So I can take sec x common maximum. So this will be 2 sec x minus 7 tan x. Isn't it? So that will be answer of this question. So this is all about uh, this basically um, in this exercise. Now let us solve some question from miscellaneous exercise as well. So now question from miscellaneous, miscellaneous exercise and what they are asking about the first question is given find the derivative of the following function. Find the derivative of the following function following function from first principle from first principle first principle this is question and the part of the questions are first one is given that minus x so first principle we can take it on let y is equal to fx and fx is given as minus x so therefore fx plus delta x is equal to minus of x plus delta x now by definition by definition dy by dx is equal to limit delta x tends to 0 fx plus delta x minus fx all divided by delta x that can be written as limit delta x tends to 0 minus x minus delta x minus of minus x divided by delta x so this this cancels out and it will remain minus delta x upon delta x that will be minus 1 and that will be answer so clearly uh, minus 1 is answer minus 1 that will be answer right so here uh, the answer is minus 1 answer is minus 1 nothing else so you can do that uh, this is the simple one the second part of the question is given here the second part of the question is given minus x to the power minus 1 so let y is equal to fx is equal to minus x to the power minus 1 that is uh, 1 upon minus x that is minus 1 upon x first one now f x plus delta x is equal to what will happen minus 1 1 x plus delta x this is the second part i hope you got it okay now um, second by definition we can write it by definition definition or by first principle same thing dy by dx is equal to limit delta x tends to 0 fx plus delta x minus fx whole divided by delta x and therefore dy by dx is equal to we can write it minus 1 upon x plus delta x minus 1 upon x whole divided by delta x limit delta x tends to 0 so that will be uh, minus i can take common and this will be x plus x plus delta x divided by because it will be positive sign if i took negative sign common x into x plus delta x whole divided by delta x and that will come up like limit delta x tends to 0 so we can write it further that uh, minus of 1 plus delta x there is minus 1 more minus so minus of this so this will be plus so x minus it will be like it will be plus x that will be 1 by x minus x plus delta x x minus <clears throat> so it will come like 1 by x 
minus 1 upon x plus delta x. So it will be like delta x tends to 0, x plus delta x minus x upon x into x plus delta x whole divided by delta x. x and x cancels out, isn't it? Now this will be limit delta x tends to 0. That will be delta x upon x into x plus delta x and this delta x is also there. So this delta x and this delta x cancels. Now limit delta x tends to 0, 1 upon x into x plus delta x. If delta x will be 0, it will be 1 by x square and that will be the answer. Now uh, question number 4, <coughs> third part. Question number third part is there and the third part is given that sin x plus 1, sin x plus 1, that you have to do sin x plus 1. So let y is equal to fx and fx is sin x plus 1. f x plus delta x is equal to sin x plus delta x plus 1. That can be also written as sin x plus 1 plus delta x, isn't it? This is sick. Now, by definition, we can write it by definition. Listen, dy by dx is equal to limit delta x tends to 0, fx plus delta x minus fx whole divided by delta x. So, we can proceed it further that uh, therefore dy by dx is equal to limit delta x tends to 0 sin x plus 1 plus delta x minus sin x plus 1 whole divided by delta x. You know sin c minus sin d 2 cos c plus d by 2 into sin c minus d by 2 minus x minus 1 by 2 whole divided by delta x. Now <coughs> this will be limit delta x tends to 0. So that will be 2 times of cos x plus 1 plus x plus 1 2x plus 1 divided by 2. So it will be 2x plus 2 times of x plus 1 divided by 2 that will be remain x plus 1 plus delta x by 2 and this x and this x 1 1 cancels out so it will be sin delta x by 2 and in denominator there is a delta x so we can divide it by 2 and multiply it by 2 as well so we will have this 2 and this 2 cancels out that will be 1 and delta x tends to 0 so it will be cos of x plus 1 that will be answered you have this one will be 1 okay. so this one will be okay. that will be 1 yeah. So, the next question is, uh, let us take on the next question that is fourth and the fourth one is question number four was fourth is cos of x minus pi by 8 and that we have to do with the first principle. So, we will uh, take on as a uh, solution. Let y is equal to fx is equal to cos of x minus pi by 8. So, if x plus delta x is equal to cos of x plus delta x minus pi by 8, isn't it? This is the first one, this is second one. Now, we can proceed like by definition, definition dy by dx is equal to limit delta x tends to 0 fx plus delta x minus fx whole divided by delta x and that can be uh, possible like 
dy by dx is equal to their cos fx plus delta x is cos x plus delta x cos x plus delta x uh, we can write here also limit delta x tends to 0 first and now cos x plus delta x minus pi by 8 minus cos x minus pi by 8 4 divided by delta x now cos c minus cos d will be uh, just like minus 2 sine c plus d by 2 so x plus delta x minus pi by 8 plus x minus pi by 8 whole divided by 2 into sine c minus d by 2 so x plus delta x minus pi by 8 minus x minus pi by 8 so it will be plus pi by 8 divided by 2 so this will be also so pi by 8 pi by 8 cancel x x cancel and now whole divided by delta x this is uh, nothing else but uh, it is limit delta x tends to 0 minus 2 sin x minus pi by 8 2 times of x minus pi by 8 plus delta x by 2 will left because 2 times of x minus pi by 8 divided by 2 will be x minus pi by 8 by 2 and here it will be sin delta x by 2 whole divided by this was delta x by 2 and multiply by 2 so this 2 and this 2 cancels out that will be 1 and now it will be left out as limit delta x tends to 0 minus sin x minus pi by 8 plus delta x by 2 right okay and uh, into 1 which is minus sin x minus pi by 8 and that will be answer this question so this is all about uh, this first principle now we can take on some questions related to this Second, second part of the question. Find the derivative of the following function. Find the derivative of the following function. Derivative of the following function. Of the following function. Where A, B, C, D are all constants. So, where first part of the question is. The second question. Um, second question is given here that x plus a so we will have to consider dy dx of x plus a x plus a is nothing else but dy dx of x and plus dy dx of a these are independent constants so 1 plus 0 is 1 answer now third question is dy dx of px plus q px plus q into r by x plus s so here we can go ahead with product rule and that will come up like d by dx of here we can write using product rule first function as it is that is a derivative of second so r by x plus s derivative of px plus q plus px plus q into d by dx of r by x plus s so <coughs> using the same concept you will have your r by x plus s plus into p px px derivative of px is p p will be taken out and x derivative of x is of 1 q is 0 here px plus q and derivative r is taken out and on derivative of 1 by x is minus 1 by x square and that will be 0 so here uh, that will be p r by x plus s into p plus px plus q into minus r by x square so finally the things will come like that will be answered even you can write it there is no problem 
right now. P R Y X. Is it cancels? Yes. Let us see one more step. This is P R Y X plus S P plus A L minus plus minus minus. So it will be minus P R Y X, isn't it? And minus Q R Y X square. So P R Y X, P R Y X cancel, and the things which is left as P S minus Q R upon X square that remains. So this is all about uh, the third question. Now question number four. We are taking question number four, and fourth question is given here. P by D X of A X plus B, A X plus B into C X plus D whole square like this. This is the question. <coughs> So you can use to solve this question. You can apply product rule in extensive way. And what is that? Or even you can split this as a d by dx of ax plus b and cx plus d whole square can be taken out as c square x square plus 2c dx plus d square. And now you can apply product rule. That is also the way. So what will happen then? In that case, it will be ax plus b into dy dx of c square x square plus 2c dx plus d square, isn't it? Plus cx cx plus d whole square and uh, cx plus d. This is nothing else but cx plus d whole square into dy dx of what ax plus b. So I can write here ax plus b and derivative from this will come x square derivative of x square is 2x. So 2x c square plus 2cd derivative of x is 1 and d square is constant so derivative of that is 0. Now cx plus d whole square and derivative of ax will come a and derivative of b will be 0. So that will be answer basically you can write it. You can simplify them but there is no extra marks will be given to you for the simplification. Now question number 5 and question number 5 is there that d by dx of ax plus b upon cx plus d. So we can apply here quotient rule and that will be cx plus d into d by dx of ax plus b minus ax plus b into d by dx of cx plus d and whole divided by cx plus d whole square. So what will come finally? That will come up here that cx plus d into ax plus d derivative of ax plus dj minus ax plus b into derivative of cx plus d will come c and derivative of d will be 0 divided by cx plus d whole square, isn't it? So that will come up acx, acx will be coming here and acx will come there so that will be cancels out. Now here ad minus bc, ad minus bc will have upon cx plus d whole square and that will be answered. So this is a question 5. And now question number 6 and question number 6 is there that uh, d by dx of we have to calculate 1 plus 1 by x divided by 1 minus 1 by x. So it will be better to simplify first that will be x plus 1 and that will be x minus 1 in numerator and denominator both x will cancel out. And now we can uh, use the quotient rule. So x minus 1 derivative of this that is 1 minus x plus 1 and derivative of x minus 1 is 1 also 1 minus 0 divided by denominator whole square. So it will be finally things will come x minus 1 minus x minus 1 divided by x minus 1 whole square x x cancel. So minus 2 upon x minus 1 whole square that will be the answer. Now 
take on question number seven and question number seven is there and one more question that one upon d by dx of one upon ax square plus bx plus c this is what given so we can apply the quotient rule again ax square plus bx plus c into derivative of dy dx of one that will be zero no need to write even though but one into i have written as one person formula and plus c divided by ax square plus bx plus c whole square so finally these things will come here this will be zero mm, minus because derivative of one is zero ax square is 2ax plus b and divided by ax square plus bx plus c whole square so the thing is minus 2ax plus b and whole divided by ax square plus bx plus c whole square that will be the answer so i hope you got it now one more question i am going to take on here uh, that is question number 8 so question number 8 is there that uh, ax plus b divided by px square plus qx plus r qx plus r and we have to find derivative of this function so again apply quotient rule px square plus qx plus r into dy dx of ax plus b minus x plus b divided at the right into net denominator here so that will be p x square plus q x plus r into dy dx of x plus b minus x plus b into dy dx of p x square plus q x plus r whole divided by denominator whole square that is px plus px square plus qx plus r whole square so what will happen in that case this will be px square plus qx plus r into derivative of ax is a and derivative of b is 0 minus ax plus b into this is 2px plus q whole divided by px square plus qx plus r whole square right so that will come up uh, some calculation is possible yes there is a possibility of some calculations so that will be a p x square plus a q x plus a r minus this will be 2 p 2 a p x square isn't it and uh, minus that will be 2 a 2 b p minus 2 b p x b p x minus 2 minus a q x and minus b q whole divided by p x square plus q x plus r whole square so 2 a p x square minus a p x square is minus a p x square and uh, minus a p x square a q x and a q x will be cancels out isn't it this a q x and this a q x will be cancels out and now minus 2 b p x so i can take negatives in common plus 2 b p x and uh, minus b q so it will be plus b q minus a r divided by this one p x square plus q x plus r plus square and that will be answer this question so this is all about um, the questions some questions which we have discussed today and uh, some more questions we will discuss after the break till then bye bye keep place keep watching and uh, god bless you thank you